This poem, Flannan Isle, was written by Wilfred Wilson Gibson, first published in 1912. The Flannan Isles are a small island group. Its name may have been taken from St. Flannan, the 7th century Irish preacher in Abbott. A lighthouse was built there, and a year from being lit for the first time, an infamous eerie mystery took place. The three light keepers disappeared without a trace. This shadowy poem was written in the first person view of a sailor who was sent, along with two others, to investigate the cause of the Flannan Isle lighthouse not emitting any light. Upon hearing the news from a passing ship that the Flannan Isle lighthouse was unlighted, the narrator and his two companions hurriedly sailed to find out the cause. Despite it being winter time, the day was bright and blue. The sun shone brightly and wave sprayed droplets onto the ship. As the ship reached the isolated isle, they looked up the bare cliff and saw the towering lighthouse with no light shining to comfort them. The men are welcomed by the sight of three strange black birds sitting upright. They disappeared without a sound or a trace when they went close to them. Still shocked, the investigators quickly fastened the boat and climbed up towards the lighthouse, each of them wishing they were away from the place, safe and unharmed. As they entered, they thought to themselves why the familiar smell of lime wash and tar had a faint smell of death. They tiptoed into the living room and were surprised to see that the table had been prepared in a way as though the three light keepers were about to have their dinner but were abruptly interrupted by something unfortunate and needed to leave hastily. This is shown by the way a chair was upside down. The men started their search and looked everywhere. However, even after a tiresome search, they could not find the light keepers. In despair, they listened silently and wondered what might have befallen upon the three light keepers of Flannan Isle. Flannan Isle begins with a powerful hook that makes the reader want to carry on reading Though three men dwell on Flannan Isle to keep the lamp alight, as we steered under the lee, we caught no glimmer through the night. The first stanza makes the reader curious to know why the lighthouse is dark, despite there, be, despite there being three light keepers in the aisle. The exclamation point at the end of the stanza implies that the narrator is also surprised to see the lighthouse unlighted. This introduces an atmosphere of mystery. The writer describes in the third stanza the morning the sailors set off as blue and bright and that they cruised as gallant as a golden flight. This provides a really strange feeling in the next stanza because the writer describes the seeing the lighthouse ghastly in the cold sunlight, even though the day was a calm and peaceful one. This makes the reader filled with dread. Like the narrator in the poem where he says, we were struck the while with wonder all to dread with words. The narrator and his companions were like the reader, filled with dread as to why the lighthouse had never shot a spark of comfort through the dark. The fifth stanza definitely makes the reader feel haunted. The writer uses adjectives to paint a picture into the reader's head of the three birds the sailor had seen when they reached the isle. We saw three queer black ugly birds, too far, big for, by far, for, in my belief, for willament or shag, like seamen seeking bald upright. Willamette and Shag are black seabirds. The tallest of them, the Shag, is about 70 centimeters tall. This means that the blackbirds in this stanza are huge, which is really strange and also gives an atmosphere of mystery. The adjectives queer and ugly suggest that these birds are probably rare or not even from Earth. The writer creates suspense in the next stanza by expressing how the men felt as they climbed up towards the lighthouse. Each of them wished he was safe afloat on any sea, however far, so it be far from Flannan Isle. The men regretted coming to Flannan Isle, and, for, and therefore makes the reader keen to know what will happen to the men. When they finally reach the top, the writer describes the door slightly open, the black sun, blist, sun blistered door that gaped for us ajar. This makes the reader feel that something intense or dramatic is about to happen. The seventh stanza really gives the reader goosebumps. The writer implicitly shows that the men are terrified to enter the gloomy lighthouse. We stood a moment, tongue-tied. The adjective tongue-tied is used to show that the men are too scared to even speak. The writer also describes the smell of lime wash and of tar, which were familiar to the men, as with some strange scent of death. 
which really sends shivers down the spine. In the eighth stanza, the writer gives the reader a feeling of suspense, leaving the reader anxious to know the fate of the three lightkeepers on Planet Isle. The writer gives vivid details about the final meal of the lightkeepers in the living room of the lighthouse. We only saw a table spread for dinner, meat, and cheese and bread, but all untouched, and no one there as though, when they sat down to eat, ere they could even taste, alarm had come, and they in haste had risen and le left the bre bread and meat. The light keepers were about to eat but were interrupted by something, and needed to leave hastily as shown by a chair lay tumbled on the floor. An adjective at the la last line of the stanza that really gives a powerful effect on the reader is the word hopeless. We set about our hopeless search. It was as if, as if the narrator knew that it would be hopeless to search for the light keepers, that he knew that they would never be seen again. This line gives a haunted feeling on the reader. The men start looking everywhere for the three light keepers, despite them knowing it was futile. They ransacked the empty house and over the land to and fro. They went back to the lighthouse like frightened children steal. This makes the reader feel worried, yet knowing underneath that the sailors would not find the light keepers. The next stanza starts with I, which suggests that the narrator is writing a diary. The writer writes in this stanza about how the men could not find the light keepers. The only traces of them were a door ajar and an untouched meal in an overtoppled chair. This makes the reader feel terrified about what was the fate of the three light keepers of Flannan Isle. The last two stanzas of the poem is just really dark and daunting. The writer writes about how the men felt about the light keepers disappearing. Oh, chill clutch on her breath, implies that something cold is clutching or to the breath, petrified and unable to speak. The eleventh stanza describes about how ill chance came to those who kept the flan in life, how six suddenly died, perhaps of heart attack, how three became insane and one committed suicide. The amount of death is a bit unrealistic, but it adds to the mystery and suspense of the story. And long we thought on the three we saw, and, what of, and of what might yet befall. The three lines at the end of the eleventh stanza says what the three men thought about the fate of the light keepers and the fate that might befall on those who stay on, stay on Flannan Isle. The men listened, flinching there, and looked, and looked on the untouched meal in the overtoppled chair. After a tiresome search, it seemed the men had given up all hope on the three light keepers of Flannan Isle. That's my analysis of the po poem entitled Flannan Isle.